This is Mark Bell from Super Training Gym. Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West. And we are going to do a coach's eye video for the fertile female, AKA Super Training Gym's very own Jessica Smith, everybody. <sighs> Here goes Jessica, she's got that aerodynamic hairdo, got the hair spiked up there on top from that ponytail. That has to make her more aerodynamic for the squat. She also has some knee wraps on, but she's not used to knee wraps. So we're gonna go over the squat for today and we're gonna go over the squat form and technique and give you guys a little something, something to think about when you're doing your squats. Now keep in mind that Jessica is handling some big weights, big weights for her. I wanna say it's about 290, 295 pounds. Um, she has squatted over 300 pounds in competition. I don't remember how much more. Um, but she's like right around that, that range. And then with uh, knee wraps on and then also her progress over the last several months, uh, she's with that weight right there that you see um, in knee wraps as opposed to her previous best was just in a pair of knee sleeves. So what do we have to go over here? We're gonna go over everything from her toes to her nose and everywhere in between. Can I get a hey now? So here we go. We're gonna analyze this and we gotta kind of start out by the feet. So let's start out by these cute little tiny feet and uh, we will see uh, what's happening to the squat. Now, a lot of people's knees cave in. It's very common, especially female lifters. Um, but a lot of people don't understand why the knees cave in. And I'm gonna tell you why today. A lot of times there's too much tightness. Um, sometimes it could be the hammies, the quads. But in this case, I think the tightness is coming from the groin, coming from the inside of the leg, coming from in here. Let's see, let's draw it on there. Coming from right there. Uh, that's where some of the tightness is coming from because it makes it difficult to push outward on the knee. You go to push outward on your knees, pushing out here and out here, and then your knees just wanna slam inward because you don't have the elasticity necessary to get down in the squat. And so what we're gonna see is as we get rid of some of these lines that I just maddened all over the place here, we're gonna notice that as she goes down, the knee is gonna start to, the knee is gonna start to actually cave in on the way down. So here we go, we're watching. You see that? It happened on the way down, okay? And a lot of what has happened, a lot of what happens with people's squats, a lot of it has to do with how you start is oftentimes how you finish. That goes for the squat, that goes for the bench, that goes for the deadlift. That goes for just life lessons in general, ladies and gentlemen. You got it. how you start is gonna be very, very important. Whether you're starting a business or starting a squat or starting a heavy bench, you can't turn your lats on in the middle of a heavy bench. You can't turn your hamstrings on in the middle of a heavy pull. You can't uh, all of a sudden muscle your way out of a big squat. Um, you can occasionally, but that's not gonna be the most ideal way. That's not gonna be the strongest. That's not gonna be the best way to do it. And so here we go. We're watching the legs again. And uh, we're gonna keep an eye on something a little bit different here on this one. We're gonna check out the feet a little bit more. Let's see, as she goes down in this squat, we are going to check out, whoops. We're gonna check out her feet. Excuse me here. I'm drawing all over the place. Um, Let's look at the feet, there we go. And uh, I will point out that she's getting on the instep, the inside of her foot. Now when you get on the inside of your foot, your foot kind of sandwiches in this way and we lose power and we're losing strength and we're losing connection to the floor. You gotta be connected to that floor. The back heel, this is her left foot. The back heel on the left foot starts to come up a little bit. You saw it right there and you saw the foot sliding around. Not possible for your foot to slide down when you have your feet really anchored to the ground. So she could probably do a couple things. Now some of you are probably wondering, hey, where's the Olympic lifting shoes? Um, I think she's tried Olympic lifting shoes on before, but I don't think she really loved them. And so that's why she's not wearing them. A lot of us have tried many different things. You see all the members of Super Training Gym crowding around, making sure the lifter is safe as possible and providing a spot, providing encouragement and getting a lifter fired up for their lift. That's how we do it here at Super Training Gym. But now as we go back and we're gonna check out those feet again, you saw the collapse there and we're losing power. We're losing what Kelly Sturette would refer to as torsion. 
and we cannot do that. We can't afford to do that. Great positioning here. This looks awesome. That looks really good. But my suggestion here is rather than like talking about stretching and all these different things, the number one thing to do, the number one thing for any of you out there that have trouble with your knees caving in is to do squats where your knees don't cave in. Use enough weight to challenge you, but don't use enough weight to allow your form to crumble. Do your reps unbroken and have your legs look a little bit more like this right here, doing a great job of driving both knees out. Now, one of the problems is I think for her, she's driving her knees out too far and then the knee is slamming back in. So in some cases, some of you guys and some of you girls shouldn't even really bother to drive the knees out. You should just squat because in my opinion, the knee should really come forward more, especially in a knee wrap, then it should go outward. Unless you're a real wide stance squatter, or unless you squat so close that the only thing you can do to break parallel is force your knees out. Um, now, another thing that happens here, and this is what causes the cascade of problems in the first place. I don't want anyone to think that Jessica's squat is a mess because it's not. She squats really well and she's been working really hard on it. So it's not like she has a million things wrong, but I'm just, I'm nitpicking here. She does a great job of getting her upper back tight and getting her body underneath the bar properly. She's in a good, strong position. The armpits are tucked down and in as they would be for a bench press, as they would be for a deadlift. I promise you'll be wrapping this video up in just a second, but it's important that you guys understand what's going on here. Now, I think one of the issues I see here is that she bends forward. And if we watch her belt and we watch her hips, she's gonna push her hips back in the beginning of the squat, right? She's breathing, she's trying not to fart, and then she pushed her hips back. What happens when she comes out of the bottom of the squat? What happens when she comes out of the bottom of her squat? What does she lead with? She leads with her butt, right? Look how high her butt is and how far forward she is. Her butt should be lower right now for where the bar is on her back and how far forward she is. Her legs should be under her more and they're not. She has to use her lower back and it's because she took her hips out of the movement by throwing her hips back in the beginning of the lift. And she didn't allow her knees to come forward. Now in this squat, her knees actually travel forward more and they don't uh, cave in as much and therefore the squat is actually easier. Did you guys see that? I'll play it back. I ain't lying. We're gonna check it out again. Here we go. So on this one, she doesn't shove the hips back on the second rep, I'm sorry. First rep, the hips go back and uh, the hips again are the first thing to lead out of the bottom. And I think in my opinion, the hips should be under the shoulders and you should drive the knees forward in the very beginning of the squat. How you start is gonna be how you finish. It's really, really important. So here, knees come forward a little sooner and she ends up with a much, much easier squat. Give that a try. Those of you that have the knees slamming in, uh, try out a hip circle when you're squatting. Try out a hip circle to warm up during your squats and uh, also work on some of that mobility. Take your time working on some of these things, but do your squats. This is the most important thing. Do your squats with impeccable form. Get weights on there that you can think about. If you can't think while the weights are on your back, then oftentimes the weights are too heavy. In this case, Jessica's pre prepping for a meet. She ain't got time for that. So she's got to just handle the weights that she's got to handle. But once you're done with your main sets for the day, you should still be practicing. You should still be working. Go down to 50%. Go down to 30%. Doesn't matter what the weight is. Get used to it and learn it. Learn your craft. Learn your trade. Make yourself better. Work on being better than you were yesterday. Work on continuing to put one foot in front of the other and be better every single day whether it's your squat whether it's your bench whether it's your deadlift whether it's your life doesn't matter what it is make yourself better every single day strength is never a weakness weakness is never strength this is mark bell with the coach's eye catch you guys later